Hey guys, welcome back to the Natty Scene. I am your host, AJ Morris, as usual, and we are joined today by another awesome natural bodybuilder in the form of Tom Pointer. So Tom is the middleweight or current middleweight Scottish champion within the BNBF, and he's had a successful season so far, bringing probably one of the most granite hard natural physiques I've ever seen or at least uh, I've seen recently for sure and you know I, I, I've looked up to Tom from from a natural bodybuilding perspective for, for quite some time ever saw ever since I saw I think a picture of his quads in 2015 uh, I've been blown away by his conditioning and also like things that he has to work around uh, you know I know that Tom has got a very demanding job um, and he also deals with an illness that we're actually going to touch on in this episode as well. So, Tom, um, thanks very much for coming on the episode. How are you today, and how's everything going at the moment? Yeah, all good, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for the intro. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite, not quite the standard of guest as you've had on previously. You've had the likes of Dave Kay and Mark Claxton, and then the uh, who have you had the social media giants of uh, Steve and. Uh, Jack Thorburn so yeah but no thanks for having me on oh no worries at all man and you know it's a pleasure to have you on and I think that you know this 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 specific podcast is is more so for giving people like a little bit of a uh, you know a, a, a voice in natural bodybuilding and your social media is is growing for sure but like you said you know it's not like like Steve is and myself obviously our social media is our our livelihood and and for you it's just something to share your progress and and now you know if you come on something like this i really hope that you'll get more followers because or, or more people that want to follow you because you deserve that i think that people are always interested in following some awesome physiques and you certainly have one of those so tom just to start off like i'm i'm really interested as to how you initially got into bodybuilding so what was it that that initially sparked your interest for bodybuilding as a sport? Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not sure what what initially it was. I think we were always, you know, the three of us. If if you, those of you that don't know, my two elder brothers also uh, compete and have, have uh, been successful in in the BNBF. Mm. Um, and we were always into uh, wrestling, WWF as as kids. Oh wow. So, uh, and I think maybe it stemmed from that of wanting to, uh, you know, get a muscular physique, but um, it was probably around about age 14, initially started sort of lifting weights and just sort of playing around in the gym. Mm. Um, and then, I don't know, guess, I guess came across some, uh, you know, like muscle and fitness magazines and, um, you know, then sort of went online and saw I think the first people I saw in natural bodybuilding were I don't know if you if you remember him or are aware of him but John Harris he's he was um I've listened to a podcast with him yeah a so, long time ago so he was um he he got his WNBF pro card through the BNBF I believe um See, when they were uh, affiliated yeah, and then also Rob Hope and Vicky McCann um, came across. So they were kind of like the first sort of, uh, I guess, influences in, in natural bodybuilding, people I looked up to. Um, yeah. And then I guess just got a bit more um, serious about training um, and and I guess went from there. And then maybe um, mm, when I was at university, I, I, I sort of, I guess I was always training still, but I had a bit of a break from sort of bodybuilding style training for a few years, and I got quite into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ah, I see. Um, and competed in that, you know, not at any particularly high level, but um, you know that took took my focus away a little bit. Yeah. Then it got, it got to the point where it was like um, you kind of have to choose one or the other if you want to make maximal progress in in you know in one area, and ultimately uh, you know bodybuilding uh one um yeah. so so it wasn't actually until um you know 2015 after training maybe nine ten years that i actually you know competed um Amazing. and although chris my one of my 
my elder brothers, he he he's obviously competed a couple of times before that, so um, that sort of uh, gave, gave us a bit of bit of confidence to um, to go ahead with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an amazing story that you know you've got through. You got two other brothers, James and Chris, and you all essentially have competed on BNBF stages across the across sort of the regional shows. I don't think you've ever all stepped on the same stage at the same time, have you? No, we've not. And uh, there's a bit of a uh, bit of competition really because I'm the only one that's not won a, an overall yet. So yeah. um yeah. so the pressure's on, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's so interesting to see your different physiques because are you all directly related to each other? Like you've all got same mum and dad? Yeah, yeah, we are. Amazing. So we, we 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 have got slightly. I'd say me and Chris are maybe a bit more similar. Okay. Um, that in in my opinion, um, yes. James has. I don't know his his upper body is is like in his his chest and his uh, shoulders and he's got a Franco Colombo look to him. Which, yeah. And I'm sort of the complete opposite. I'm sort of lower body dominant. Um, Completely different shapes as well. It's really interesting because you'd you'd think genetically you'd be your structure and the shape of the muscle bellies would look similar, but it's, it just doesn't. It looks almost yeah. like completely opposite ends. It's really cool. Yeah, it's strange because my my dad as well. He he's got like enormous quads and calves, and he he. I mean, he doesn't train at all. <laughs> but he he, he does he does you know like running and things like that, but. He's never bodybuilded, but his his quads. I think that's definitely where, you know, my leg development comes from. Yeah, sure. Did you did you guys train together when you were like when you were all younger? Did you, all three of you train together, or were were you always quite sort of like you you all shared the passion, but you all sort of got on it with it in your own aspects? Yeah, we we all sort of. I mean, we've trained you know here and there together, but we never you know for. A, you were never like training partners for a, a period of time. Sure. And obviously, we all went off to university and things. Um, so, you know, when we were bodybuilding, we weren't necessarily in the same place. place yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say it's only really over the past few years that, and I guess because of bodybuilding, that we're, we've become a bit closer. Um, so yeah, we, but but pr- prior to that, growing up, we were never, um, you know training together or things like that we yeah just got on with our own thing really sure sure so so tom when was your first experience of a bodybuilding show did you go to watch one before you competed or was your first show the one that you actually sort of competed in no um so i back i mean i i've, I've been to a few just sort of spectating but i think the first one i went to was Maybe I think it was two thousand and five. It was wow. the. Uh, I went to. I went to two at a similar time. There was a BMBF. I think it was like the south, south, southern, um, and I also went to a, I think an NPA finals. Okay. Um, and again, uh, going back to the you know my influences, it was John Harris did a guest spot. At, at, I think it was the BMBF one. Um, sure. And it, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was good. Really good. Um so And you were hooked you were hooked in by, by sort of John Harris and, and the potential that a natural physique could achieve, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um so so yeah, just just spurred me on and then I got I got a bit more um sort of following the, the, the natural scene 'cause it I mean it I think it's growing now. But, how did how did you follow it back then? Was it like forums or did you follow it online? Like what did you how did you follow the natural scene? Yeah, so it was all forums uh, initially when I first got into training, and yeah. um, I think it was UK Muscle, and there was uh, Natural uh, Natural Muscle, which is still going actually. That, that's John. That's John's forum, okay. uh, and there was also the BMBF forum as well, uh, which uh, sort of occasionally sort of went on but yeah. um, is that how you yeah. learned to sort of like set up your initial training and your diet or or like who taught you sort of like the initial training and diets that you followed before you did your first prep um for, well i guess to some extent it was a bit of everything really it was um you know there was there was information online but again you you like today you've still got all the bro science Crap, yeah uh, uh 
and then obviously the experiences of like Chris, who had competed at you know two year two seasons before as well, uh, and obviously won British titles and things. So he he ah. was a he was a big uh, sort of influence in terms of just knowledge and just the like what to expect on a on a contest prep diet. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, so I guess various sources of, of information, but also the fact that um, although I'd never done a prep before, um, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of trained and, and dieted to some extent, and, and I guess trial and error of what, what worked for me in terms of like getting reasonably lean, but obviously contest prep is a, is a different ball game altogether. Yeah, sure. So, so, so it was a lot, a lot of trial and error, really. Um, I, I learned a lot from that first season. Yeah. Uh, what were your initial expectations, and how did you get on at that first show? What was your results? Yeah. Um, expectations. I, I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I went into it just wanting to do it as an experience. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. I never really had because. As with now, you, you know, bodybuilding, you, all you can do is is bring your best package and, and you can't control who turns up. True. Um, so I think it going, everyone wants to go in and win, but I think you have to be careful going in with those uh, sort of expectations of I'm definitely going to win. True. I think I think the thing for me is standing on stage and knowing that you've put absolutely everything into it. Um, and that that's such a, a rewarding feeling. I, so I feel. true. Um, so anyway, yeah, I did I did the BMBF Scottish in 2015. Um, the reason being was that I I knew that that was probably going to be I was only going to do the qualifiers because that's the year I graduated. So I'd I'd start work um, sort of August time. So mm. I, I sort of made that decision that I, I was not going to carry on. To the finals if I qualified. Sure. So I'd do the earlier qualifier um, and, and get it get it done as and get that ticked off. So I did the Scottish and I um, I won. There was a big novice class, so it was split into lights and heavies. Mm-hmm. So I I won the light heavyweight class there. Um, nice. And and I got I got the best wheels award, which I was pleased with. Yes. Um, and then yeah the. So, so it was a big shock, even because you th- you think after the you know the show you you know you're all done, and then then you go up on for the overall as well, which is uh, you get another trophy, which, which is an experience. So, but it was won that year by uh, Dave Hennessy. Uh, he was one of the masters competitors. He was uh, just unreal. Yeah, yeah, uh, just granite. Amazing. So yeah, that that you know that must have been such a cool feeling to essentially. You know, coming to your first show with, you know, like you said, sort of quite zero expectations and zero pressure, and then you know you take the win. Um, you know that must have felt amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I didn't. I mean, I just didn't know what to expect um, going on stage, whether I'd enjoy it or not. Um, yeah. It got to the end of prep, and I, I, I was really just fed up with things. I was, wow. you know. Um, so what happens but, when you get as, that appealed, mate? <laughs> but 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 as soon as soon as I got off stage, like, because Chris said to me before, you know, you, you once you get up there, you you'll you'll absolutely love it. Um, and I got off stage and I, I was just I was hooked. Like, yeah. and I I knew that even though I wasn't gonna carry on um for the finals that year, that I'd, I'd definitely be up on on stage again. Yeah. Now, Tom. But 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 actually that year as well. Also, I I did the UK DFBA. Ah, uh, okay. Caledonian show there, yeah. Uh, again, uh, and I, I took second there in the novice class to um, uh, oh, what's his name now? <laughs> I can't remember. I, I remember it. I must be good. Media. Yeah. Oh, he, he he was awesome. He 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 was. I guess had a similar physique to me. He, was, he, he had re- really really strong legs. Okay. Uh, really sick calves, um, but. I guess probably just a, a bit more complete. Um, sure, sure. But again, that was a huge class um, in the novices. Yeah, it seemed to be popular nowadays. Like the novice sometimes crop up some of the best classes. 
especially if they're if you get to the point where you're at a qualifier where it's strong and they're not weight split you're in a bit of a you're in a bit of a really tough position because you've got so many different physiques up there yeah yeah absolutely yeah so it's one of the toughest i mean we've we've already had an overall winner this this season uh chris um chris c chris c yeah yeah, yeah he won won the Welsh, didn't he? So it's it's a, it's a high standard in the novices. Yeah, for sure. Now, Tom, going into this year, obviously you went back and you competed at the Scottish. Did you feel an element more pressure um, coming back as a winner and coming back as someone that, you know, we knew how shredded you could get? Did you feel like there was a bit of, oh, we know that Tom can be really good? Did you feel any more pressure this time around? Uh, a little bit, I guess, just because... Um, I know. I mean, obviously, James had had, had smashed the the body power qualifier four yeah. weeks before, which uh, which which was great. Um, I don't know. I, I guess to some extent, because everyone, I, I was I was doubting myself, as you know, you you do before a, a competition. Um, like, oh, am I am I going to be as lean as I was? Am I gonna am I gonna over diet here? Am I am I going too far? Um, and then everyone saying to me, "Oh no, you'll be fine. You'll you'll smash it." You so that that adds a little bit of pressure. But I mean, to 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 a large extent, not not really. I I, okay. I just I, I enjoyed it. Um, it, it was great. It was just great to be back in on that show. That show, like, I, it's I can't say enough good things about the Scottish show. The atmosphere is just incredible. Yeah. The and, venue, uh, the venue is amazing as well. I've I've been there. I I went there for the British finals in uh, last year. Yeah, last year. And uh, yeah, yeah, Perth Concert Hall. It's amazing. It's so big for a for a, for a, you know for a qualifier. Yeah, and it, it was it was great as well. There's there's a, quite a few guys who had competed, uh, you know, in 2015 with me there. Oh, nice. Back again, like Mike Bryce, the overall winner. Um, we competed together back then, and um, there was Mick uh, Mick Boyle, he, the Masters competitor. There were, yeah, there was a, a few guys there, so it was it was good. Amazing, cool. So, so moving on a little bit now, Tom, onto a bit of a different topic. So, I know that you've been. I don't know for exactly how long, but I know that you currently deal with an illness, and it does to an extent come into and play play a role in your bodybuilding um, and sometimes affect things so sort of talk us through uh, what it is and and how you've come to over the years deal with it and still be able to produce such an amazing physique on stage yeah so um i i, I think it was two, 2012 I, I was diagnosed with uh, something called ulcerative colitis okay. which is uh what we broadly call inflammatory bowel disease. So that that's Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are sort of two distinct diseases within that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, the the nature of it is, I mean, without going you know too too much into things, um, sure. it's it's a you know a, a chronic disease. So that there's no sort of cure as such, um, okay. but the aim is to sort of get get the the inflammation into remission. Um, okay. So you basically have periods of, uh, you know, remission where things, are, you know, you still have um, daily sort of symptoms um, for the most part, um, but things are, you know, fine. They're controllable. They're manageable. Mm. Um, and every now and again, you'll have a bit of a flare up for okay. whatever reason. It's it's um, it's quite a it's not a particularly well understood condition, you know yet in terms of um exactly uh what the what the cause is it's thought to be autoimmune um okay so uh so it's sort of a bit random really uh when things decide to flare up mm. you know a lot of people um think maybe oh it's due to diet it's due to stress but um there's not really any good evidence to say that you know that that you know causes a flare-up I mean certain things in your diet can exacerbate your, your symptoms when you're having a flare-up but um, for the most part it, it's a bit random so mm. um, so I, I, I basically was diagnosed in 2012 um, got into a reasonably good remission and then I, I've, I've not I've not 
suffered, you know, to I can't complain too much. Like I see a lot of people who who have a much tougher time than me who have had like multiple surgeries and things and oh, Christ, and yeah. I, I think um, you know, I've had a couple of like flare ups which have needed hospital admission, but Okay. That that's, you know, a couple within what five years um mm. so you know I, I can't i can't complain too much it's for the most part pretty manageable okay um but i am you know i'm on sort of lifelong medications and things um mm. so yeah i mean it, it it does you know it does have an effect on bodybuilding i suppose would you uh, say that your consistent diet with bodybuilding is is potentially like a a, a good factor in the way that you know you're you're, you're you're so regimented with your food that you can spot if anything has changed and affects things at all well yeah i mean that's what i was going to say is that i think um i mean one thing that i definitely i mean i said diet doesn't necessarily affect things but alcohol particularly it causes problems so i i mean i don't i don't drink at all now um so i think it's definitely given me a bit of a a focus as such you know um having having bodybuilding to focus on and yeah you're right um i think eating you know good food and and paying attention to diet and and um and yeah um just sort of optimizing your nutrition when it because a lot of people with with crohn's and colitis can become you know nutritionally deplete in certain areas because of the uh, because of the process, particularly in Crohn's disease, when people are suffering with things like, like malabsorption because of the the area of of bowel that's affected. Oh, I see. Um, so um, yeah, I think I think it's definitely, you know, you can you can draw positives out of anything, can't you? Yeah, so, massively. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've I've I'm just you know, it's been okay um, the past. I mean, basically, my last flare-up that I needed hospital admission was around about the finals, ta- BMBF finals, um, just gone. So it was like sort of September time. So, um, and I'd I'd always had the aim to compete this year in in you know in 2017, and I I, I was very much at that time thinking, no, oh, there's not a chance I'm gonna be able to compete in 2017 yeah i think i remember uh, i think i remember sort of some discussion seeing some discussion about that like james sort of saying you know you will compete and yeah you know, yeah so so he gave me a bit of a bit of a kick up the arse and, <laughs> uh, um and yeah it's just uh, it's just been it's as hard as prep is you know like it it's it's enjoyable. Like I love it as well. It's it, and it's been something it's to just focus on. Yeah. Um. So. So yeah. Uh, I think there's there's negatives and positives to take from it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Massively. I mean, you know, it's it it it's amazing, mate. And it, you know, it shows that, you know, whatever the obstacle, you can you can still bodybuild and you can still work around it. And if anything, you know, like you said, it's just given you a a really cool focus to be driving your attention towards and potentially you know when you've had flare-ups and things like that it gives you a bit of a a light at the end of the tunnel to think okay well uh, once I've got this sorted I can get back to doing what I love which is bodybuilding and you know just get back on and feeling better yeah yeah Yeah. definitely um and and just to to sort of like add on that I, 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 I don't like to play the sort of you know the the sob story kind of thing because I know that I mean that's everyone has their their uh, you know their issues during prep sure. um, and um, that's just my particular thing you know um, uh, you know prep you know life throws up various things for for different people and and, it, and it's it's always going to be a challenge no matter no matter what so um, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you don't yeah, you don't I've lost on a bit yeah, there. no not at all mate no it's a very good comment and and you know i think that i've got a friend who a female friend at the gym that 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 deals with the same issue um and and she's 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 a compete like she's a competitor and uh 
you know, I um, I think that I sent her across to your Instagram so that she she could sort of like follow your stuff and and you know I, I said to her you know you you and you and her are individuals that I just don't I don't you don't complain about it you know you know you just crack on and you just deal with the issue and I think that's admirable because you see time and time again people that you know yeah they're prepping and like you said preps hard in general and life throws up things that sometimes we don't even talk about because you know they're bad and we just hide them but we see people complain when in reality they've got it they've got it quite easy you know they're either they're either doing a prep and they're not truly in contest shape and they're complaining um i've seen that a lot of times um you know and you, you get other people that you know have got no issues at all no injuries no niggles no illnesses whatsoever and and they, they still complain and you know and then you get i think the people that do the best buddy are the people that just you know take what it is and just crack on um and you're certainly one of those people in my eyes that just takes it as what it is and, and gets the job done which i think is the best mindset you can apply to it right yeah well yeah thank, thanks i appreciate those comments uh, oh, awesome. but, but it's like it's like we say isn't it it's it's a choice at the end of the day no one's no one's holding no a gun to your head you. and saying you, you need to prep. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen, a, seen a few things uh, recently with people just, you know, posting up Instagram stories about how hard things are. are and, One week uh, out, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even not even, you know, maybe not even competing, just sort of, you know, dieting to get in shape. and the, Yeah, the for like a beach and, holiday. And, and yeah. So, um it's like get your glutes lean and then tell me when you're hungry <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. um so tom like i know a lot of people are generally interested in like what goes on outside of being a bodybuilder uh, and i know for you at the moment you seem to have some like wacky schedules to your day sometimes i know that you train in a 24-hour gym i've seen i've seen posts of you training legs at like 1 a.m and like doing a night <laughs> shift and all of this jazz so so, so what do you do? What do you do for a living, and like, how do you manage to fit that into your training? Like, what does like a general week look like for you in terms of scheduling? Um, yeah, so it, it, it's very uh, so. Well, to start off with, I'm a I'm a, a junior doctor. Um, so uh, basically, after we qualify out of out of university and get our medical degrees, we do um, two years what we call foundation training okay so it's, it's sort of broad you, you go you go from four month job you know around the specialty so I'm actually coming up to my second um you know at the end of my second year so I'm, I'm moving on to a new job um well start of August actually okay but, so yeah um it's it, it varies very much week to week um with depending on whether you're on call, you know, doing night shifts or doing long days, or so there's no sort of, um, I guess, standard. Structure. Week. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, the good thing is that, as you say, I found um, a really good 24 hour gym near where I work. Yeah. Um, so I train at a couple of different gyms actually, uh, okay. which, which is, which is good for motivation. I, I like the different, uh, the different atmospheres and the different uh, different equipment and, and things like that, but um, yeah, that's that's made things really helpful to have that twenty four hour gym and not just being like a you know a pure gym or something. It's it's like bodybuilding gym. It's a really good gym. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just varies with with you know doing night shifts or doing lates. Um, yeah. So so you just sort of have to you know. It's, it's 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 simple enough to do it's just it's just rescheduling that part of the day when you you're actually training and uh when you have to shift around it, meals and things like that now and again when you're doing nights yeah i mean one of the big things that has changed this prep as opposed to last time is that i i was always very much um i guess of the bro mindset of i need to be eating bang on certain this times time, this time yeah and 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 the same amount of meals as well, like really small, frequent meals, and it was just not feasible um, now uh, in 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 my current job. So um, 
I actually eat a lot less meals, but more volume in each meal as a, as opposed to what I yeah. used to do it. And also, so um, I, you know, I, I don't beat myself up if 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 my next meal is delayed by two hours or so because it's something. You know that overall I, calories matter more. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and actually, when I when I do night shifts, the sort of transition period from uh, coming off nights to when you go on to nights, you sort of almost, it's almost like an intermittent fast because mm-hmm. you, uh, and then when you come off nights, you're readapting again and you like sort of backload yeah. a load of calories. Yeah. So it's, that's quite a good feeling actually when, when you finish. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's like you say, it's just overall energy balance over not even a 24 hour period, but over a weekly over period. Week. Um, yeah, that's it. It, as soon as you get your head around that and, and you stop sort of beating yourself up um, and, uh, it makes and life so much easier right it, re- it really does yeah. and, and you and you realise that it's just as effective yeah um, massively so uh, uh, what sticking on diet Tom what does a what's your general approach so are you a high fat low carb are you a high high carb low fat um, and alongside that literally at the moment you're you know nine weeks out ten weeks out from the bnbf british finals what does an average day of eating look like for you from 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 sort of meal one through to through to your last meal um so it, it's I, I tend to have sort of structured diet um <laughs> but with um you know i'll I'll vary sources of, of carbs to some extent and, okay. um, and you know, try and keep a little bit of variety. Um, but I mean, for the most part, it's it, it, it's fairly structured and it's fairly what we'd class clean clean foods. Uh, you know, oats, rice. Oats in the oats sweet. in the morning is is oats your first yeah. meal? Yeah. Well, it depends really on whether uh, whether I'm doing cardio. So. Before before the final, you know, before my contest, uh, the Scottish, I was I was doing like seven days yes. a week cardio. Yeah. On now, the stairmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like how how long were you doing, and what just, intensity? Just twenty minutes of like sort of moderate to high intensity. Um, level level ten or level eleven on the stairmaster? No, le- level fifteen on the um, Fuck. on the pure gym ones. You know, Is that the matrix. matrix? Wow, yeah. that's pretty. That's pretty fast, man. I'd say that's pretty fast. Well, man, that makes me feel like I'm going fucking slow on level eleven right now. <laughs> but I, I, can't, I can't. I can't do any more than twenty minutes. I just get bored. No, I bet. I, I'd get I, fucking blasted by level fifteen. No, I'm just. It's it's just the boredom <laughs> factor. I just like to hit it and, and get uh, off. Yeah, get yeah, off. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, but now I've cut back. I'm I'm doing sort of like four days cardio, okay. just keeping it in. I I, I quite. I quite actually like it to be honest i um, like it four days a week yeah i actually yeah. enjoy it um it's quite nice in the mornings as well it's quite peaceful um, yeah, i agree you do it sometimes super early though don't you like 4 30 a.m sometimes yeah 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 so there's usually n- not many people in there which is <laughs> nice uh, I, c- I can't go into a pure gym when it's busy yeah so so do you do you get that uh, done sort of fasted usually yeah so, so yeah i've gone off track there um so normally um if I'm not doing cardio, oats, uh, oats and like propeptide and Udo's oil will be like my first meal. Nice. Um, but before that, if I'm doing cardio, I'll tend to have just like a whey shake okay. before and like 30 grams of whey, and then I'll uh, drive over, do my cardio, and then come back, and then oats will then be my my first meal. Nice. Um, okay. and then I guess. Uh, throughout the day, it, it can vary to some extent, but but yeah, um, similar sources of, I mean, tend to just have like rice, sweet potato, um, you know, as my predominant carb sources. Mm. Uh, and, and do you, do you tend to eat sort of higher carb, lower fat? Then is that what your generalistic approach to the diet is, or or do you keep fat a little bit higher than other people? Um, yeah, I, I I would say I'm I'm moderate everything really okay. I'm, I'm not really uh, you know I, I try I, you know I, I I don't think I ever dropped carbs below sort of 
three hundred grams. Wow, it's, that's pretty uh, high. That's really decent. But I'm not. I'm not like one of those super high. Like I'm not. You know, <laughs> five hundred grams. David K. Then. Like, um, yeah. So I'm. I'm not. I'm not like really high carbs. But I'm. I guess I keep everything reasonably moderate and, mm. and try try and keep a reasonable amount of fat in there. My, my fat sources mainly, to be honest, just come from oils. Udo's yeah, oil. I use Udo's oil. I use yeah. like sesame oil and peanut oil. Um, nice. for, for yeah, just I, I find it it makes foods a lot more palatable as well. Udo's Udo starts to taste really nice when you're dieting, right? I used to have that a lot. It does, yeah, yeah. and it, and it's it's actually you know in terms of like I used to use in the off season like nut butters a lot. Yeah, you but, get bored um, of them. But yeah, I, I find I find as well like you need a lot more, you know, you, you need you need to use a lot more of it to to get the same sort of taste. Um, so so calorie calorie for calorie wise, I, I like I like using the oils a lot. Yeah, for sure. Now that makes a lot of sense. And is there anything in your diet that you know this time you've done differently to your first prep in 2015? Like, have you sort of kept calories higher? Have you dropped like? Have you changed any with anything with your protein intake? Have you changed anything at all since your first prep? Um, I guess um, I've kept carbs a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, uh, but for you know, for the most part, it's been pretty similar. Um, cool. I think it's just been it's been a longer prep. Um, I guess so. So things have been able to be a bit more. Um, can, you know, controlled cool. uh, uh, weight loss, and it's just been—I mean, nothing fancy about it. It's just been a progressive calorie deficit over, you know, over the weeks. And everyone, everyone's like, "Oh, what? You know, you know, my sort of non-bodybuilding friends like, how, what foods do you eat and, and all this?" And it—it it, it really just is. It's energy balance. Yeah, um, yeah. And food, food choice is obviously important, and and having. Um, foods which aren't too calorie dense because... has more prevalence when you're dieting down for sure yeah in terms of yeah satiety and fullness yeah but yeah at the end of the day it's just been a you know a progressive calorie deficit over time um and but the interesting thing is that post show um I, i've i mean i'm now i'd say about 450 calories sort of Above? surplus yeah. to, to what i was on before the the um the show Mm. And I'm doing cardio, as I say, still four times a week, but as opposed to seven days a week. Less. Yeah. And 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 my weight has not shifted. I mean, I'm maybe amazing. I'm maybe like point five. It varies between point five and one kilo above contest weight, which is just. I, I mean, very good place to be. It is is the it's psychological as well in that I'm, I keep thinking, oh, I lost. Of a lost muscle tissue is that why um so i i don't know um i think i may well come in a little bit lighter for the finals but i, I want to make sure i come in you know a bit fuller to now, be this, now this uh, but... is the golden question tom with that 450 calorie increase and a reduction in cardio but your scale weight staying the same do you still feel like garbage do you still feel really like like you're in prep or do you feel slightly better what would you say? Yeah, I feel I do feel slightly better, but okay. I, I I guess I, I would have expected to feel better than yeah, I do. Yeah, you won't you won't until you gain it, weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's odd. I think the one thing I, I, I still feel like I'm in you know I'm in prep, but hunger isn't a problem at the moment, like okay. whatsoever. It more so uh, energy levels. It's just yeah, it's just yeah, energy levels yeah. and co- and concentration as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's an odd one. But, that's, uh, that, that's the thing when you when you're deep into prep, you start just like accepting that you, your level of hunger is just static. So you yeah. know you you know you're hungry meal to meal, and that's just that's just something you deal with now. It's in the back of your mind. The main thing that we crave, I think, is just the energy. That's literally yeah. that's li- I'm in the same position now, mate. Where I just all 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 I want, I don't even want a big fat burger or anything like that. All I want is just to be able to feel like I can 
get on with my day without having to rustle up the energy to just walk to my car or you know just to do the basic shit that doesn't require much energy but is such a task when you're yeah. lean um so i think that's you know that's a that's a sign if you're a competitor and you just get to the point where all you crave is just a bit more energy then you're you're probably doing fairly well in terms of conditioning um cool well tom we've been we've been going for a while so i'm sure that people's people's cardio is probably finished up now and uh we we can leave them to crack on with the rest of their day so we uh we will finish on uh basically what what are your plans now like what's the next show are you sticking with just focusing on the bmbf finals or are you are you tempted to sort of do any more qualifiers with other federations and yeah what's what's the plans buddy yeah um yeah and, and sorry we've waffled on a bit there ah, no um, worries at all man so, it's all good yeah my, my my focus is is just the bmbf this year i think okay. um so, so we've got the finals in nine weeks uh, yeah. in Birmingham. So, really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a high standard. Um, but no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and you'll be in the middleweights, yeah? If anyone's sort of watching. Well, uh, I'll be in the men's open, so I, I guess they, okay. they'll still weigh you on the day, uh, and it just depends where you lie. But I would imagine I'm in the middleweights. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you de- almost definitely won't fall into the lightweights. Is it? Is it more? Is it more so a chance of you? What's your stage weight? Out of interest. So I weighed in fully, sort of carved up at like seventy six kilos. Okay. Okay. So and that was that was pretty much the cut off, I think, for 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 middle. That's middles. where you want to be, isn't it? Really. Um, I think so. lightweights in most federations is like under seventy, isn't it? Usually yeah. In most yeah, federations. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. Well, Tom, thank you very much for your time today. Um, I've I've really enjoyed this chat, and it's awesome to get to know you a little bit more myself. And hopefully, hopefully, the listeners have enjoyed it. Uh, one last thing as well. I'm, I'll be sure to obviously link these things in the in the sort of the the YouTube comment section below. But uh, what's your sort of like social media? outlet that people can follow you on like would you say that instagram is the best place to go and and what's your what's your username on that if people can go and sort of follow the rest of your prep yeah so i, I predominantly just use inst i mean i have facebook for more like personal Normal stuff, and things yeah. but uh but instagram that uh, it was only really this prep that i've started getting getting a bit more into it um That's good. so yeah i'm uh, catch me on there um it, it for the, for the most part and it's uh, T point of one awesome um, so yeah g- give me a follow mm-hmm. if, if you want. Um, cool wicked yeah. well Tom thank you again for your time thank you for coming on uh, like I said really enjoyed it um, guys if you've got any more questions or anything that you'd like to sort of give us feedback on for this episode just whack a comment in the comment section below uh, thanks again very much for listening and we will see you in that next episode. Cheers, Tom. Yeah, thanks. Uh, mm. and, and just to say thanks for thanks for doing all these these videos. It's, it, it is really good, uh, you know, promotion and exposure for natural bodybuilding. It's something we don't really have. You know, these interviews. It, it's it definitely you know when you when when you are in that stage of prep, it, it just gives you that that boost, that motivation. Uh, listening to other people. So yeah, yeah. I wish I. I it's something i wish that i had when like i was getting into bodybuilding as a young lad like i'd i'd have loved shit like this yeah Um, yeah and uh, i think that you know it's something that we've not seen yet so hopefully it continues to grow um and like anyone listening right now like your support and you know the amount of times that you either screenshot and whack it onto your story or take a picture of me and tom and and whack it on your story and tag us like all of these things massively help and the more people that get listening the more it will grow and and the better people you know the like the crazier people we can get on and uh that that will help help the growth as well so yeah amazing tom and uh guys we'll see you see you soon cheers see you in birmingham yeah